Hi, welcome back. Uh, I'm Dr. Craig Malkin. I'm a clinical psychologist and lecturer for Harvard Medical School. I'm also the author of Rethinking Narcissism, uh, newly released in paperback, and that's why I'm having this event. I wanted to give back to the community all the wonderful support you gave me for my release and the courage and outpouring that people showed in telling their stories. I've said repeatedly that one of the keys to your recovery is telling your stories, giving voice to what happened to you, not being isolated with it wherever you find that community that is a healing community um, and if you want to review i talk about recovery in a previous video and you can go back to that and i talk about post-traumatic stress disorder right now i want to move on briefly to careers i'm running out of time here so let me say a little bit about jobs if you're dealing with narcissism in the workplace um, there is, uh, there is enough research on it at this point to know what works and what doesn't, and I don't want to say briefly about that, but I also want to say you have to, in the same way I, I talked about um, in the previous Real, Real Narcissists videos, uh, in the same way you have to look out for the, the three stop signs, uh, uh, psychopathy, denial, ongoing abuse uh, of what, whatever kind, as a sign of danger and, and a reason to get help leaving the situation, there are certain signs that you want to look for in the workplace. If you have a boss who is a bully, uh, and Ruth and Gary Namey of the Workplace Bullying Institute did a number, a number of studies on this, some formal, some informal, where they determine the most common bullying behaviors. And they are not surprisingly things like being screamed at, uh, uh, being unfairly punished in inconsistent ways, singled out, iced out or feeling excluded, um, being called names, obviously, these things are bullying. And I want to say in the same way I did about relationships, it is not on you. Maybe I didn't make that clear in, in relationships. Abuse is 100% the responsibility of the abuser. Only they can change it. This is part of breaking the cycle of self-blame. I call this the dry well analogy. You think of a, of a relationship like a water that has enough, a well, and either has enough water for you to survive or it doesn't. If it doesn't, you might make a trade. You might tell yourself, oh, it's me. I'm going about it the wrong way. I need to approach the well differently. I need to dance around it. I need to paint some pretty symbols on it. And then maybe I can get enough water from the well. Maybe I can get my thirst quenched. But what if the well is dry? In relationships, sometimes the wealth is dry. And now you've traded you've traded uh, a sense of hope for a sense of personal failing. You now feel like the problem is you. And the same thing can happen in the workplace, uh, especially because you can feel trapped in the same way you do in a relationship or an parent-child relationship. You can feel stuck. And like the only way out is to think, well, maybe it's me. Maybe there's something I'm doing wrong with my approach. Abuse is 100% the responsibility of the abuser to change. Doesn't matter what your approach, abuse is never an acceptable response, period. And that includes in the workplace. What that means is it's 100% the responsibility of the system to intervene. And you have to figure out, is it safe to seek out help if you have a narcissistic boss or you have a narcissistic coworker? Um, one of the easiest ways to seek immediate help and think this through and see if the system is supportive is if you have what's called an ombud or an ombuds person. These are people who, like therapists, are, are, are bound by confidentiality. You want to read an agreement because it varies from place to place. But most of the time, they're often even independent contractors brought in. You can speak to them about what's going on so they can help you figure out in the system itself how to negotiate what's going on. And if, if, if it's a case of bullying, they can help you figure out, okay, is this workable? Do we need some intervention? And it's a way of testing out. Uh, but before you go higher up to some like, like HR, you need a sense of whether or not it's safe because very often, as Ruth and Gary Namey have pointed out, HR is part of management and you don't have that confidentiality. And, it, and especially if it's an extremely narcissistic system, it may not be safe. You know, if, if, if it's a place where everybody jockeys for attention and people are rewarded for pushing people around, chances are it's a narcissistic system and you're not likely to receive res support. I go over this in detail in Rethinking Narcissism and even some interventions that you can use. So let's just talk about a couple. Um, 
if you if you're not seeing those signs of danger of bullying and and you're just wanting to see if the situation can improve remember i said that we know that uh empathy fluctuates um we also know from a dozen independent studies i think it's more now that the key to reducing narcissistic behavior just as we talked about in making sure children don't grow up extremely narcissistic isn't confronting them with their nastiness it's focusing on moments of collaboration and caring it's redirecting them to feeling a part of something that, it, that there's research now that even that increases empathy in people who are psychopathic feeling like they they are, belong in some way or something affects them so really in the workplace you're trying to tie a sense of being a part of something to success in the workplace you want to tie getting along to getting ahead but you want to protect yourself too so obviously document everything. If you're running into problems in the workplace, make sure you document, make sure you back it up on your home drive so that you can take it with you so it doesn't get lost or hacked if it's that kind of a system. But another really easy technique that you can use is something I call catching good. I talk about this in parenting too if you read Rethinking Narcissism. So catching good uh, is simply, if you have a moment where a coworker, say, a, an example would be the coworker who usually sort of pays no attention to you, so it says, hey, I'm going out for coffee, you want some? You want to reinforce that moment. One question came up is, can you shape people behaviorally or are narcissistic? And the answer is yes, and we can see that from the research. Um, it, it doesn't matter what you know whether we know it's going on or not we all respond to reinforcement if you re if you reinforce or reward relationally people who are narcissistic for the right behaviors for being communal for showing those flashes of empathy then then you you see more of it if there's any hope at all so catching good is you know oh i'm going out for coffee says your friend you says your says your coworker um mary is usually aloof and arrogant and do you want any? You say, oh, thanks so much. Um, that's that's really thoughtful of you. I, I really feel like we're deep in the in the weeds here, trying to work our way out, and it really helps me push forward so that we can get this job done together. But when I feel like you got my back this way, so so thanks so much. Um, it, you know, if you do not reward those moments, they may not happen again. And those are the moments you want to reward. When people tried confronting, when they tried in the research, when they tried confronting coworkers, uh, when they when they tried um, uh, taking them to task, especially terrible idea if somebody has power over you, they were not happy with the results. Not surprisingly, um, and I will go back to Ruth and Gary Namie's uh, research again. You really want to be careful to assess the safety of the system in which you're finding out whether or not you can appeal to higher ups about what's going on because uh, it, sometimes it can be a dismal outcome often the system protects itself and uh, you can wind up being scapegoated scapegoating is not unusual and then you wind up without it without a job um, so just briefly circling back to the, the, the question of bullying so yes you can shape behavior in the workplace the other thing you can do that's simple there's some more uh, involved techniques that I go into in rethinking narcissism. The other thing that's simple that you can do um, is to remain task focused. That is, when you're, for example, your your coworker is chewing you out. Uh, maybe they're playing in a game of emotional hot potato. Uh, they're not sure what's going on with the project. They feel unsure. So they're like, "Why are you doing that? That doesn't make any sense." And, and none of it is productive. And none of it is helpful. You redirect them to the task. You say, uh, first there's the query, and then there's a request. Two parts. This is remaining task focused in the workplace. Um, can you help me uh, understand how this brings us to completion on the project? What is it that you want changed? And then, and then let's just do it. What, what is it specifically that you want to have happen here? Redirect them. Very often, if people are workable or not, they can be redirected in that way. Obviously, this is not about um, increasing closeness or being chummy and uh, one of the things I point out is when you're dealing with uh, relationships where you've sort of given up on any hope of intimacy these same managerial tactics if you will uh, work just as well like remaining task focus I mentioned when you're do trying to do an email exchange with an ex over, over custody. Mm -hmm.